Hi there, I'm Camilla and uh, in this video we're going to talk about something really important when we are working with line and wash florals and that is working with greens. I know the flowers are not green but the leaves, the stems, uh, everything around it is green so we want to not forget about the green. And greens can actually be a little bit hard uh, to get looking interesting. So in this video I'm going to share with you how I do it. Because I really try to not just use green but use other colors as well. But still keeping it simple and, uh, and uh, elegant. Because in line and wash one of the most important things is to keep it simple. So you're not going to, you don't want to overdo it, especially not with the mixing. And I'm going to share with you how I do it today and also looking at a couple of leaves and uh, seeing how I would approach this leaf. So let's jump right into it. And I just want to start out by doing a quick sketch of a few leaves so you can kind of just see what we're working with here. So just a quick, uh, that was this one, sketch there, then a, uh, a rose leaf here, let's see, kind of a ragged edge here, it goes up here, that's these lines going out. Well, this one had that too. We can give it that here. But of course, this is not about the shape of of the leaf. This is more about the color. Um, so this is just to kind of get us into the shapes here of different leaves there. Um, there you go. That is the kind of the three leaves I have here. I think I'm gonna add just another one for for the fun of it, just because I have a that's a nice color combination for that as well. So there we have the four leaves. I have my colors here next to me, and I'm gonna put in the description here below which colors I use. I'm gonna use a base color for all of these. And then um, that will be a sap green. So I'm just going to write that here. So that is kind of the base for all of these. And of course you can mix your own if you have uh, blue and yellow. But often they turn out a little bit uh, in a way I don't really like it. And I want it to have as little uh, mixing as possible. So as I said before, especially when we are working with line and wash sketches, I want it to be... To have it to have as few colors as possible so that's why i'm using a pre-mixed green instead of a mix of green or yellow and blue let's start out with this one and if we are if we are so lucky to have colors or have leaves directly from the garden we can actually look at the colors close up and this one actually has some yellow in it um, not a lot, but just a little bit that gives it a yellowish hue. And um, so I'm going to wet the leaf here. And I think I have something in my brush that is leaving a little bit dirt. But, oh, that's annoying. So this will also get a little bit of a brown hue. <laughs> but I'm just going to dip in some of the sap green here. You can see how it spreads really nicely in the water. And then I'm gonna take a new gamboge and just put it in a few places. And you can see I'm not mixing it on a palette or anything, I'm just dripping it in. Not much, but, and I think this is plenty um, to give this a yellow hue. If you wanted to mix a little bit more, you can uh, drip in uh, some clean water, just where it 
this place, let's see here, and it will spread even more. But don't uh, start mushing it around, that would be a shame. So that was this one. Now we have a rose leaf. And a rose is actually, uh, it's kind of beautiful. This is a red rose. And uh, actually the leaves tend to have a red hue to it, which is kind of cool. Also, you can see that the tips are um, all a little bit wilt wilted and the stem is actually red as well. So we want to kind of show that in a, I'm not going to use a really, really bright red, but this is more like a, a uh, purple hued kind of red. So I'm trying to see if I can find that in my palette. But first I want to give it this, again, the, the sap green base. So again, just wetting it roughly. You don't have to wet everything. Uh, again, less is more. That goes with the um, applying the water as well. So by doing it very roughly, you can see how it gives us some white space. I do want it to go... Oh, drop my brush there. I do want it to go out on the, to the edges a little bit there. But not uh, thinking too much about it. So let's see which you two choose. I have a really, really beautiful color that's called Rhodonite Genuine, which is kind of a reddish hue, and uh, but still has this uh, kind of pink uh, feature. So I'm gonna I just drop it in, and you can see how this is already starting to dry. So it won't spread that much. When we are, especially when we are working with red and green next to each other, we want to be super careful not to mix mix it up, because it will uh, they are complementary colors, so they will muddy up. So if you want to avoid a brown leaf, try to just leave it to dry, just let it do its thing uh, on its own. And then uh, leave it, because if you start mixing it up, it will become very muddy. So we can uh, leave that to dry, and then we can go in with that one. And that is uh, this leaf here, and I actually feel like this one is very dark and has this almost like a blue tone to it. So I wanted to mix this one with a bluer tone. And you do see how we can actually work with a lot of different colors when we are doing leaves. And um, you really just have to study the leaf that you are working with and go from there. Since this is a very dark one, I'm gonna... This is still the sap green, but I'm adding it with in a more dense version, so there's not much water here. Um, to get different values of the same um, green here. I'm going to use a Prussian blue and just dabbing it in here. And the blue and green you can add, you can uh, mix up a little bit more without messing up. So if this one over here would become really muddy. But these two colors are so close to each other in the color wheel that you can you can mix them up quite a lot more. And I'm adding quite a lot of color to this one. I think this will be really pretty. And just to give it a little bit of texture, I'm actually going to add just a little bit of clean water. Just to give it something else. And uh, this might disappear completely, but it's okay. And you can see how this one over here is starting to dry. Getting us this beautiful bloom. And uh, creating a texture. And... Uh, that will happen when we are working with watercolors. Don't be scared of that. It's really beautiful. So that was this one, Prussian blue. And finally, I promised you a last um, leaf here. And this is actually one I'm using uh, quite a lot. I like to use it for 
uh, especially when we have plants that are very green and kind of need something else. I like to go in with this. So just using the base color again. Of course you can use other base colors. I just like the sap green because it's a nice uh, versatile green and it just gives me that pop of color that I want in my my leaves. So in this one I'm going to go with a violet. So just dropping in a violet. This is a quinacridone uh, di 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 dioxine violet. Um, and I'm just going to use a little and this will just make it a lot more interesting to look at. And uh, you can again drip in a little bit of water if you wanted to mix. But that is actually the four versions I'm going to show you. First we have the New Gamboge, where you have this yellow tone to it. This is great for when they are starting to transition into fall. Um, but also a lot of leaves have this yellow hue. Then we have the red here, which is because the leaf actually has yellow tones to them. Also, you can go to another layer where you can actually add more if you like. Um, but do again, don't overdo it. Then we have a very dark, almost bluish uh, leaf where you add this these blue tones that are very mixable with the green, so you can do it a lot more. But again, don't overdo it. We love that we have the green tones against the blue. It creates this beautiful contrast and beautiful life into this leaf. So very, very beautiful. And then we have this one, which was a sap green combined with a violet, creating this very interesting looking uh, leaf. So you can really use almost any color to combine into the greens. Greens don't have to be boring at all. Um, I'm just going to let this dry and you can uh, see how it looks when it is dry. <clears throat> that was some greens for you and I, uh, I hope that this inspired you to go out and uh, create some, maybe some green leaves, but also just enhancing your floral sketches because that is what it's all about. And if you want to dive even more into this less is more approach to uh, line and wash sketches, I have a freebie here below uh, that's called Breathe Life into your floral sketches. Less is more is one of the, the tips there, but there are a lot more to come for there. So uh, check that out if you want to dive even further into this. And of course, if you are interested in more kind of uh, real-time videos, you are more than welcome in my garden studio on Patreon where I have uh, real-time videos every week. In uh, There's two tiers, the daisy tier and the poppy tier. The daisy tier is kind of, you know, dipping your toe uh, once a, a month with a video and the other one, the poppy tier, is every week. And that's not, not just line and wash, that's also loose watercolor, everything, whatever. I'm working on at that time so join me there if you are interested in more and then I just want to say have a wonderful day go out and uh, find some leaves to uh, just look at and uh, see if you can kind of fin figure out what colors are in this particular leaf and try to replicate that on your page and uh, remember don't have to be perfect it's just uh, better uh, done is better than perfect a lot better than perfect. So go out and get sketching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!